Alright guys, Master Zeon here with another Blender tutorial. As you can see, I'm using Blender 2.67, the latest version at the time. Uh, so we start out deleting everything, add in a cylinder, put 12 sides, get lit out on the X, add in a several loop cuts. From there, we'll go ahead and put a solidify to see how it looks, and put a simple to form. So the simple to form doesn't exactly work right for me at the beginning until I apply the rotation then it'll bend the way that I want it to. So that's pretty much all that there is to the macaroni. So in edit mode, while still looking at the result, I can modify the geometry just to get a more macaroni looking macaroni noodle. So at the beginning, I actually scale it in, but in the end, I end up using the solidify outwards to make the noodles look more like they're connecting with each other. <clears throat> so basically this video is just a study on me trying to make a food item like this macaroni and so the first time I tried to make it I used SSS and had a bunch of nodes that were terribly expensive to the CPU so my goal here was to get the look of a macaroni to have as an asset without the horrible render times of subsurface scattering and you know it might be a little excessive to use SSS on a food product especially if it's a prop in an animation so for the bowl, as you can see, I just dropped in a cube, deleted the top face after getting it the right height, scaled it out. Now I just delete everything, so I have basically a plane. And then from there, I'll build the shape of the bowl. And right here, I scale, but I press hold shift and press Z so I can strain it to the Z axis and don't scale on the X and Y, or scale only on the X and Y. So I duplicate the bowl, delete all the faces, and this will be the proxy bowl for capturing the noodles. I had some bright idea that I could bring a particle system and use that to, you know, paint the noodles in the bowl, just, you know, fill it up, but that didn't work out. So now I'm duplicating the noodles. An interesting thing to note is that whenever it comes to modifying objects after you've put the the rigid bodies on it that you can't have the rigid body applied and then expect to use the proportional editing to move it you can move an object individually but as you'll see I'll get stuck here for just a split moment but I do correct it so I found out I've made too many noodles so I delete some out and here I'm making the mistake of putting the game physics on first. First I try to let them just rain down normally, but then I delete them to simplify it. And so there's the first round of noodles. And as you can see, I'm trying to move it. it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Why is it not working? And this was something that I mistook as a glitch at first until I realized that silly me I'm using the program incorrectly I even try the other fall off types to make sure and I think I even go into edit mode or not so I just move them all manually and Sploosh. So because there are so many noodles facing the same way, it looks incredibly uniform and unfortunately very fake. So now that I got that figured out, I'll use the proportional editing to just make random noodles fall out of the sky. And I'm just pressing double R for um, turntable rotation. And now let's our noodles rain down. So some got caught in a bowl. Now the easiest way to stop it is to, I mean the easiest way to get what I'm going for, which is just noodles in a bowl, is to just join the noodles that are in the bowl with the plane and then just move these noodles to fit in and then capture those. And so I'll catch these noodles, merge it with the plane. The reason I merge it with the plane is because the plane has no animation. So if I join them to it, there's no animation data being carried over. So that is pretty useful. And then I just keep catching the noodles until I get the way I 
want it. So now I'll just take that same plane after separating it with P. I'll just make it a floor. Mess with the focal length of the camera. Get the camera in the position I want it to. And voila. So now I have a bowl of noodles. And I'll just select some of these off the top. You know, I might want those later. I'll just move to layer zero. Spoiler alert, I don't want them later. So I add a solidify. Like I said, I'll turn it inside out this time so the noodles look thicker and like they're actually touching each other. Change over to cycles and begin rendering. Everything's dark, there's no sky. There's no lights, there's no textures, of course. So I'll add an environment texture. I have quite a few HDRIs I've collected all over time. Uh, this one's just a, a light cloth, um, which gives me a pretty nice fall off on the overall shading. So now I'll just texture the bowl. Making simple ceramic is pretty much just taking a diffuse texture and then laying a glossy on top of it. But in my case, I decided to go for something a little more complex. So I actually tried using a layer weight node in order to change the amount of fall off. So that'll do be the bowl for now. Now over to the noodles. Turn the top view to a node editor. We'll give it 20 bounces so that way I can see some colors moving around. And my favorite way of double coloring things is to uh, use a layer weight with the mix node. And so I'll just paint one color really extreme and then just tune the facing portion of the layer weight node using a color ramp as you'll see here. And the color ramp pretty much just harshens the transitions between the two edges or at least that's the use I find in it but you can use color rounds for all sorts of things whether it's shading a strand of hair or modulating the intensity of another texture on top of another sorry I kind of lost my thought there so I got the base coat for the noodles so now I'm just going to overlay it with a couple of glossies to just give it a shiny look like the picture I was looking at on the internet and so I added my rough specular that'll just kind of be broad and real light. And now for the sharp one, or as I was referring to it at this moment, as the uh, light catcher. Playing with the clamp settings is useful for reducing fireflies at the expense of detail and therefore getting better render times. But the expense of it is your fireflies which account for your bouncing and caustics so you know keep those things in mind whenever you're rendering because if you just begin messing with the clamp you can see it's making some pretty big changes behind the scenes so that does it this pretty much concludes the tutorial just making macaroni and cheese except there's more that's needed to be done. This is a nice material. We'll make it a group. Call it mac and cheese. And this is also a nice setup for the ceramic bowl. We'll make this a group too. So now we got macaroni and cheese in a cheesy bowl. And in CG textures, I have several pictures of grunge and just walls that I just use for various purposes that I need for noise. I could have also used uh, procedurals and in that way accomplished the goal of building a realistic asset without any photo textures. But instead, I decided to just use an image. So connecting an image to a node won't work. You have to drop in a texture coordinate that they seem to move every version of Blender. <laughs> so connect that up to generate it. That's what we got. Adding a color ramp, that'll not only make it black and white, but allow me to clamp the values the way I want. And so I'm just clamping it to look like, 
you know, someone scoops some macaroni and cheese in there. So the areas that are white will be mac and cheese colored with a little bit of bump, and the areas that are not will, of course, be bowl colored. So in modulating the texture, I found out that not having seams will give me a pretty rough transition. So I added a seam and uncut it. Now it looks a lot better with the seam being hidden on the rim. And so more tuning. So by the end of it, I just began adding a bunch of nodes to pretty much just cut several parts out of it. But as you can see, adding the, the stains to the bowl makes it look a lot better. So now we'll jump into texture painting, I mean into vertex painting, which it's like UV painting except without texture coordinates and your density for painting or your resolution is only as good as your polygons. So I use it for splashing color in areas where color needs to be splashed, but not exactly accurate. So it has other uses, but that's the use I have for it. So I'm going to use that paint over job to pretty much mask out certain parts of the stains. Because I definitely don't want the stains outside of the bowl. That would indicate, you know, you're served by a disgruntled chef. So I drop in a mix node, and it takes me a minute to notice that it didn't do the intended effect of cutting it. That was when I realized that the mix was not, I mean, when the multiply wasn't set to 1. And now, as you can see, I'm able to get some much better results. And I tried throwing in a bump map because I was reading that they made some improvements to it. I guess I need to update Blender again. And so now I'm throwing in a mix note to try to reduce the amount of intensity that is on the, I guess now what I'm creating is the bump map. So mid gray means there's no deformation. The wider it gets, the more up it gets pushed, the more black it is, the more down it gets pushed. By having a smooth transition, I'm able to get what I'm going for here but as you can see the transitions are kind of hard so you'll see me fight this all the way through even until the very end when I realize that my cheese is actually corrosive and is eating into the bowl so I try using invert invert for some reason did not help I figured for this part portion I would need to use some sort of Photoshop trickery in order to get the areas to be the color that I wanted them to be but in the end I ended up becoming a little bit more trouble than it's worth so before I make another video I'll definitely be checking up on the process of converting bump maps to normal maps and just how to improve that workflow and cycles And the bowl looks a little dark in the front, so I will drop in a point light and pull it forward just to paint the front of it to be a little brighter. That'll help the render. Change the samples to zero so it renders eternally. And now I'll take a moment to read my email. Uh, what do you know spam and as you can see on the left side of the bowl the cheese is very corrosive eating into it so at this point I would recommend this mac and cheese to anyone that you like so we're gonna isolate the bowl zoom in on the side draw an arrow that disappears and hold down control and the node editor and you can just turn your cursor into a knife you know just lightsabering these nodes Especially if the connections aren't going the way you want. It feels nice sometimes. So, back to the old drawing board of messing with this. I'll just use a diffuse since it'll look better. And at this point, I see I finally got the bump looking the way I want. However, the geometry displacement does not look very good at all. So my only hope is to reduce it. 
Now, every time I accidentally click zero, I have to undo, which causes the render to recatch everything in case you're wondering what's happening here. So now the cheese is just thick enough. And voila. So now I'm able to put it all together and turn on the uh, full al alpha for the pass per out. Check a note caustics, uncheck note caustics because I want all the rich colors that can come from the bouncing to be present. And turning on no caustics will overall take away some of the detail, making it the equivalent of internal at its best. So no caustics is something that I try to avoid turning on now. I used to turn it on all the time just to get my renders to pump out fast. But it was one of the things I think that was hurting me in the, in the end. So, you know, keep that in mind. So as you can see, this is the final result, and we just let that grind on. So even though I'm using a GTX 5A, you can see it's definitely not rendering as fast as, and it's more than likely as a result of the complexity of the cheese shader. Since I use multiple nodes for it, um, uh, glossy and diffuse, it'll cause it to be more expensive on the render time. So keep that in mind whenever you're mixing shaders together um, good rule of thumb is try to keep it down to three shaders um, if you're really trying to be on top of your render times or at least that's just master C on tip for you so this is pretty much the end of the video with the render looking at its best I can go ahead and say thank you for watching this video and happy blundering